So what is going reproductively extinct in the wild? Well, for the abalone, it means that there are some in the wild, but too few to be able to reproduce enough to keep the populations from going extinct. So how do we handle this as scientists? Well, first we have to understand how they reproduce. They use a method of reproduction called broadcast spawning, which means the males and females of the species release their gametes from their respiratory pores. Once released, they let the water column combine the gametes for them. When the female and the male gametes combine, it makes an abalone in its first larval stage of life. The development stages of life are similar to the metamorphosis of a butterfly or the development of a frog. At the beginning stages of life, scientists have found larval abalone no bigger than five times the thickness of your hair. They swim around until they settle on the ground where they start growing as abalone. Now, why does this matter to the white abalone status in the wild? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with population density, which refers to the amount of abalone in a given space. For instance, in this slide, we see a lower density on our left-hand side and a higher density on our right-hand side because there are fewer abalone in the same amount of space on the left. Now, do you think it would be easier for the abalone to successfully reproduce on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side? Before I tell you the answer, these are the questions scientists ask, and you're doing exactly what a scientist does in a lab. If you guessed on the right, you're on the right track because it is a lot more probable that the male and female gametes will meet and fertilize to create new larvae if they're closer together. You might even be able to say that social distancing wouldn't benefit the abalone. This is just one reason we're worried about their populations in the wild though. Another reason is that they take forever to mature or to be able to reproduce. White abalone specifically take around five to seven years of fending off predators just to be able to reproduce. In order to help, the White Abalone Captive Breeding Program led by Kristen Aquilino at the Bodega Marine Lab through UC Davis and Melissa Newman with the National Marine Fisheries Service, as well as other organizations and institutions like the Reef at UCSD and the Sea Center in Santa Barbara and others along the coast of California have been hard at work to bring this species of abalone back from the brink of extinction. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today on this Mollusk Monday. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to learn more about the White Abalone Captive Breeding Program or want to stay updated, check out their Instagram page or website linked below.